Okay, we are now recording. So, welcome to the special Animal Crossing session. Um, before we begin, Stephanie and I are going to reveal a little project for those of you that will be taking Japanese next semester. Uh, so, we have been in the process of designing, and this is not the design. We will debut that design later. We're going to be trying to teach some Japanese through virtual YouTubers. So here's my little uh, virtual YouTuber character here. Uh, and we're going to have our own very special for the UT mentoring program designs that will debut sometime during the winter. So please keep coming if you are interested. I think it's going to be fun. This guy's kind of, I don't know, tsundere. Not very... And he doesn't react really well to movement. I remember mm. that, yeah. yeah. He doesn't look too friendly, but... Uh, tonight's session, we will be teaching you all about winter vocabulary in particular, but things that might come up if you like playing games, particularly Atsumare Dobutsu no Mori, which is the Japanese name for Animal Crossing New Horizons, the current Switch game. So... Stephanie made this amazing, nice design. It's so detailed. I really appreciate it. Uh, let us continue on. So we have a little video. This is a TV commercial for the fall season of Animal Crossing. So let's take a look at that. Ah, hold on. Sound. <laughs> You couldn't hear it? Uh, okay, it'll, it'll be yeah, present. Yeah, it'll be present. Yeah, it'll be present on the, uh, on the version, uh, that's in the, uh, sorry, that's in the recording. So, you guys watching this on YouTube probably can hear it, um, but it's a little hard to set that up for the Discord stream. But, yeah, it was just the, the Animal Crossing little weeby dee weeby dee weep sound of them talking, so nothing important. Um... So, Animal Crossing is a really, really big deal in Japan, as you all most certainly know. It's uh, been around for quite a while, and very popular to grow up playing this game, and it, the launch was you know, as big of a deal as it was here in America. People were super excited about it for a long time. Uh, Animal Crossing, if anyone that's watching this doesn't know, it features real-time seasons, so... Right now uh, is still the end of fall, but they just added the update that adds all the winter features in. So a lot of really, really cool stuff going to be coming to there soon. But Stephanie, why don't you teach them the season words, even though I'm sure you guys have learned this in Genki, but it'll be useful for everybody watching this from home. Yeah, um, so the word for season is kisetsu, which I put in the top left corner there. Um, so for spring, it's haru. For summer, which they often associate with a rainy season, it's natsu. Um, for fall, it's aki. And then for Bryce? Sorry. And then for winter, it's fuyu. Um, so yeah, there's the seasons in Bryce, if you sure. want to add anything. Uh, yeah, that's, um, I mean, that those are the seasons. Uh, you can, you can <laughs> plop any of those on to say a word like yasumi. So if you just take the word summer, natsu, and add that to yasumi, you get summer break, right? Uh, winter break being hu uh, sorry, hu yasumi. So it's very, very useful. I mean, you can, um, talk to your friends with that. Um... You know, you hear people in Japan pretty often say, oh, you know, Japan has four seasons. And there's kind of a perception in Japan that a lot of countries don't actually, you know, fully experience the breadth of the four seasons. Japan most definitely does. A place like, you know, Knoxville does too, for example. Um, but you might hear somebody say, oh, well, how many seasons are there where you're from? And it's kind of a weird question without context. Uh, I don't know. Any, any other any other shidi mame about seasons, Stephanie? No. Okay, well, uh, let's continue. So here's a little nifty little fact. Uh, so this is Isabel. Everybody knows Isabel. She's in Smash Bros. She's been Animal Crossing since New Leaf. Her Japanese name is Shizue, which is thought to be a pun on the Japanese word for the type of dog she is. She's a Shih Tzu. Uh, 
and you know she has her little secretary dress there and everything. Uh, but on the Japanese rail trains, they actually for quite a while have been running these ads, uh, which are kind of fun facts of the day with Isabel. Uh, it rotates through, you know, every so often, and they play commercials on these little boards in addition to like um, train departure information and stuff. So this one is a fun fact, pretty much saying. Um, you know, the word whiskey has two different spellings, and then she says, I wonder what the difference is. Um, I have a clip here. I have no idea how this will work. This is on a website called Niku Niku, or sorry, Niko Niko Dolga, uh, which is sort of like Japanese YouTube. Uh, so you can see the whole full cycle there. Uh, so let's take a little look there. And you see those are, um, comments going across the the screen there people saying oh she's a these get really chaotic i don't know if any of you have ever seen uh like a music video from niku 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 um but quite quite fun so you get the point from that i do believe um let's go back here so there's a few words associated with winter, and Stephanie, I'm trying to add something here to OBS, so why don't you talk about those words? Yeah, um, so as we said previously, the word for winter is fuyut. Um, and so the word that's shown both in the picture and um, after fuyut is yuki daruma, so it's literally snowman. So yuki, it means snow. Um, and then daruma just kind of means like the man part of snowman. So literally snowman, yuki, daruma, Bryce, you, <laughs> you don't need to add that. Yeah. Wow. You're yeah, using, you, where'd you get my art from? You, you, when did, when did, you know, you, I can't be alone here. I like, can't, we can't just have like an omniscient voice in the background. You have to be represented <laughs> somehow. So there you go. Okay. Are. Well, there's my art of my self insert from D and D anyways. Bryce. Um, so the picture below says, Yuki daruma no tsukiri kata to kotsu. Um, so I looked it up. Kotsu means um, basically know how or it's like skill. Mm. So, um, um, tsuri kata. So, kata is actually a grammar form you can use that means how to. And if you take a verb, make it mas form. Take off the mas and add a kata, it means how to blank. So, for example, tsukurimas means um, to, make. to make. So, sorry, I was like, I was staring at something next to my computer. Okay, <laughs> um, tsukurimas is to make. So, if you drop that mas, tsukuri, and then just add a kata after it, it means how to make. So, um, for example, how to eat would be tabe, tabe kata. Mm. Um, you just drop the mas. And it means how to. Um, so here it's saying how to make a snowman. Um, and it basically the skill of making a snowman. Um, so yeah. Yeah. And, you know, studying, studying with Genki, you won't learn this kata form for quite a while. Um, but like Stephanie explained, it's, it's pretty simple to use. And it's very, very helpful, very useful. This is one of the things I probably say, you know, somewhat... One of the most frequent things to use in Japanese for me. Um, so for example if you don't know how to get somewhere rather than just saying you know like how do i get there you can say like ikikata so like eki ni ikikata wa nandasuka or something like that and uh you can it's kind of a more polite way to ask that kind of question so uh super super useful um yeah, yeah. and you know daruma are also used i think for, like those little red daruma dolls that you see in like anime and you know just in japan a lot the little red guys with the mustache so daruma kind of just means like figure or doll in, in a lot mm. of senses. Uh, okay, so this video I've already... Oh, I've not put this one in. This is the um, the uh, Christmas event premiere. Uh, so this is pretty recent. But this one as well, the sound will only be available in the recording, but it's just a nice little jazzy tune. And that says Thanksgiving, by the way, in Katakana. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving Day. And this is the, the turkey friend, uh, Franklin is his name. Those are kabocha, which are pumpkins. Mm. That's Christmas mm. Eve. Christmas. Eve. Christmas Eve. 
and this kind of light event in Japan is called illumination. They'll say like, illumination ni kimasho, like how Christmas, if you want to go see the lights. Presento, so they're giving presents, presento, so luckily that's an easy one. San, tak, san, Santa. And they're adding some new features to the Tanuki Mile, uh, which is their name for the, uh, for the Pro Mile, so I'm not sure the name in the English for Suwaru, to sit, bye bye. Chari, kun kun. Tai, tai, to work out. Yoga, sadozo, and waku waku, which is like excited. I can't remember that one. But... And the new hairstyles. Wow, they have like a grandma haircut. I love it. And the other things. Consultation about the home. So I guess there's a. Oh, yeah, you have more storage in your home now. Nice. Furthermore. Sabu so, data. Uh, moving your save data. Oh, okay, I don't know this game as well as you guys do. And then free app update update is basically what it says. Update book. Coming soon, so. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure there's an English version of this too, but it seems somehow more fun to, to watch the Japanese. Uh, okay. Nerd. Indeed. And. <laughs> oh, thank ah, you. How do I. Okay, there we go. So, there's a lot of actions you can do in Animal Crossing. Some of them. You just saw in the scene before, like they have the uh, suwaru action to sit. Um, but Stephanie has introduced particularly some fishing related ones. Yeah, so to fish is tsuri, so that's like the noun um, fishing. But there's also the verb tsurimas, which is to be fishing or to, to go fishing, to, to do fishing. You know what I mean? Um, and then fish is sakana. You guys have probably already learned that one, if I remember correctly, earlier on. Um, so, and then there was actually a word. Oh, I don't know why I didn't put the English, but suri zao is um, fishing rod. Mm -hmm. um, so that first kanji is for the fishing. The second kind of means like a stick. Not stick, but like a rod, I guess. Um, and then there's actually a word that means outline of a fish. Like, so... So, like, in the game, when you're about to catch a fish, you'll see an outline of the fish. There's an actual word that means, like, the outline of a fish in the water when you're going to catch it. And it's gyoe. Um, e, that, that second kanji means shadow, and that first kanji obviously means fish, so fish is shadow. Um, and as we said earlier, kata can mean how when added after a verb. And I told you, um, tsurimas is to do fishing, so tsurikata. Um, and usually when you're gonna say you're do like teaching how to blank, you put a no in between. So sakana no um tsurikata. So like how to catch fish. Um Yeah. Yeah, lots of good ones. And yeah, so you know, in that compound gyoe there, uh you're using the compound reading of both, you know, both kanji there for both shadow and sakana. So in a compound sakana tends to become gyo. There's words like um but I believe it's ningyo, which is person, and fish together, which makes the word mermaid. So just useful to be aware of the alternate yeah. readings for those. In and when he says compound, he means when it's with another kanji. So if you notice, mm. sakana by itself is pronounced sakana, but when that kanji gets added or slapped onto another kanji, it can sometimes change its sound. So, for example, it turns into gyo. Yeah, exactly. Like two, two kanji or more compounds, uh, there tends to be... A more common reading for those that's usually different from when it stands alone uh, okay continuing so we got some tools here uh, if you're a minecraft fan some of these might actually be useful for minecraft too shovel is okay. scope which uh scoop right uh, can we do a minecraft one of these I'd love to do a Minecraft one. The whole semester I've been saying, Lit. hey, let's like let's do like a Minecraft game session, but we've never gotten to it. So. No, I don't want to do the game session. I just want to do the vocab. <laughs> okay, sure. I mean, let's do both. Uh, you don't have to participate <laughs> in the playing, but I think you should because Minecraft's a good game. But... I prefer solo playing, but okay. Well, that's fair. That's fair. I usually do um, just building. I usually don't do survival too much. But um, the, the word tree is uh, ki. You also sometimes see it pronounced moku. It's the same kanji that's in moku yobi. Thursday, uh, and then horu is to dig, like with a shovel in particular, and then kiru is to cut, uh, so you could use this to refer to cutting something with scissors, like cutting paper with scissors is kiru, 
to cut thread, uh, all kinds of cut, just like the metaphorical sense. Like you can kind of use that with a lot of things. Like when um, when you stop sales of a limited time items, that's that's kiru as well. So this is a very useful word. So down there on the bottom, that says ki no kirikata to horikata, right? How to cut a tree and dig. Um, so it's the same kata as before. So kiru to cut becomes kirimas, or is it sorry just kimas? I'm sorry, just kimas. It's, no, it is Kirimas. I'm going crazy. It's Kirimas. Sorry, it's I'm going Kirimas. crazy. I was right the first time. I don't know why I doubted myself. Going crazy. Uh, I've been crazy, right? Uh, and yeah. then Horu becomes Horimas. Uh, so, yeah. Pretty useful. And you can remember it like you dig a hole. I don't know. Mm. Like it, it sounds like hole, maybe. So, like to dig a hole. Horu. Uh, yeah. Anyways, yeah. Well, I tried. Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, we're exhausted if you can't tell. <laughs> We've had a lot going on. <laughs> But uh, we're enjoying this. We're glad you guys are here with us. Uh, so Stephanie has some bug words as well. Yeah, so the word for bug catching is mushitori. That first kanji means um, bug. Um, as you can see, bug is mushi. Um, that's a kanji that luckily did not change when it was put into compound, at least in this situation. And um, tori is um, the noun version of toru to like catch or, um, well, honestly, toru can mean a lot of things. So just, like to take. Or it can mean, yeah, to take. So maybe it could be translated literally as like bug taking, I, I guess. Think it's a literal translation. Like you use that okay. same, same toru with like to take a picture, shashi no torimasu. So. Mm. Or like, um, Jiu-gyo-o-torimasu, like to take a class. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it can be used a lot of ways. Um, and then ami can mean net. It can mean, like, fishing net. But apparently, when I was, like, looking up, because the, the vocab for this game, I saw people using it to also mean, like, bug net. And I was like, well, okay, that seems very generous usage, but okay. Um, so below we see mushitori no kotsu. So, again, um, like, um, the skill of bug catching, or, like, the bug catching no wall basically just being able to attain the knowledge of how to bug catch, I guess. Mm. I wonder if, like, translating that as, like, the art of bug catching, if it has that kind of... Yeah, way. yeah. It, it, it was a hard to translate, because in the dictionary, it can just kind of mean, like, being knowledgeable of something. Probably, like, skill set. I don't know. I'm trying to think of the English video game equivalent. Mm. Probably skill. Probably just skill. Bug catching skill, right? Yeah, something like that, yeah, probably. something like that. That's a good one. Uh, cool. And there's all kinds of bugs uh, in the game. And uh, I, Stephanie, I don't know if the next slide might be some of those, but there's so many. Yeah. Uh, the best way to, to learn those, and you can like learn every bug you'd come across in Japan, pretty much, just by playing this game. Uh, literally just play it. They'll have the kanji for some of them, but species names are generally written in katakana, which is nice for us foreigners. Uh, and so literally just play the game, and you'll see new bugs and fish and all kinds of creatures. And their species name will be written. It's a great way to learn it. Uh, it requires a little active, you know, learning. You sometimes have to write it down, uh, but very, very useful. Lots of lots of animals to learn. Oh, I skipped one. Okay. Wow. So here's a few of the species you might run into in Animal Crossing. We have Capin over there on the left, and he's a kappa. If you came to our Halloween session or have watched the recording. Uh, you will know that Kappa are sort of turtle-like folklore characters. Uh, they're usually in real life kind of mean somewhat. They, they want to take your soul stone. Watch the Halloween session if you want to know what that means. Uh, and how unpleasant it would be, I suppose. Uh, I definitely don't want my soul stone taken by a Kappa. Uh, but yeah, so they're in Animal Crossing. Uh, then there is our little friend Raymond there, quite popular these days. He He's is... called Jack in the Japanese, fun fact. Oh, Jacku. Okay. Jacku, yeah. Super American y name. He's wearing, you know, like a business suit. Got his little, uh, what, comb over on his head. He's a cat, which is, as most people might already know, Nekol in Japanese. And we have our good friend Isabel here, Shizue in Japanese. And she is a dog, which is Inu. So, good to know, good stuff. We have, uh,. Some of the villagers I was just, yeah. here. Well, you can just name them off. I meant the animals in Japanese is what okay, I meant when so I put this slide. That's got a sheep bad. or a ram there. That's Hitsuji. I don't know if there's a different word for ram versus sheep. Do you know, Stephanie? I don't think so. I think you would just call it Hitsuji. But to be fair, I can barely distinguish them. Even if I was yeah. like talking in English, I would probably just say sheep. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, what is it? There's No, 
so goat is Yagi, I think. And then sheep is Hitsuji, so I don't know if that's a goat or a sheep. And honestly, I don't even know what the difference between a goat and a sheep is. Um, but and goat is Yagi, yeah. But um, a goat and a sheep are totally different. What are you talking well, about? Well, they're similar enough that I don't care to distinguish them, to be honest. <laughs> they're not! They're really not! <laughs> Have you seen how stupid a sheep is? I've not seen goats be sheep particularly are smarter. Sheep notorious. Okay, goats are smarter than sheep. I can promise you that. Well, Anyways, sheep is Hitsuji, goat is Yagi. Um, and we have next to him on the right there, what is his name? Vayash Kolfu? Why is that his name? I don't know. Vayash Kolfu. Okay, well, We're he's... We're talking about what animal he is. We he don't seems care to be a what... horse. He seems to be a horse, which is Uma. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. And then there's a, a little chicken to the right of him. Chicken is Niwa Tori. Niwa means yard or garden, and then Tori is bird, so it's like a garden bird, because I guess you can keep them in your gardens. Mm. Uh, Stephanie, you want to do the next row? Yeah, so um, mouse is Nezumi, that's what that is, um, and then elephant is Zol, it's just that easy, it's Zol. Um, the next one I just put as an example for bird, so Tori, um, do you want to do the next round or me? Yeah, so line three here, we have a blue bear friend, his name is... Uh, Poncho and bear is kuma in Japanese. Poncho. Uh, yeah. Poncho. Poncho. Interesting name. Poncho. Uh, I guess this is a monkey, a really ugly yes. monkey. Uh, wow! Jeez. <laughs> Listen, she's she she has way too much lipstick. I'm sorry. I, I like my. Are monkeys. you saying you know what an attractive monkey looks like? I know that she's not one. That's all. I know enough about monkeys to know that. Um, uh, monkey is sadu. Uh, you can also say monkey if you want to be particularly a westerner. Uh, we have our friend Carl the frog here. Uh, frog is kairu. Uh Why do you say it's so American? It's kairu. Thank you. <laughs> listen, listen. His name is Carl. Okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, if you've watched like uh, My Hero Academia or anything like that, and you're familiar with the character Froppy, who's also a frog. You'll probably know that in Japanese, the sound a frog makes is kettle. So, like, kettle, kettle. Uh, kind of fun sound. Uh, and then we have a wolf here, I believe. And if I'm not mistaken, wolf is okami. Correct. Long O there, I believe. Okami. Mm -hmm. Okami. Okami, mm -hmm. yeah. And I will move Stephanie and myself out of the way. So you better. You, so you can, uh, you, can, you can read this last item here. Oh, you're going to make me do it. Yeah, okay, whatever. Okay, so that's a rabbit, at least I'm assuming. And so that's Usagi. Um, and then the next one, we're, we're assuming that's a goat because it looks like one. Oh, that's definitely Thank a goat. Thank you. Yeah. Well, okay, well, we, listen, that's Yagi. Um, and the <laughs> next one is ku, Kuba, right? Kuma. Uh, no, ku, always get it wrong. Oh, Kuba. gosh. I, I learned this just the other day. What is it's Kuba. That, that that's that's the answer. <laughs> no, I, what is it? Hold on, it's um. No, it's not. Gosh, we forgot the word for hippopotamus. I'm trying to remember the animal it is is my problem. It's a hippopotamus. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, and hippo is uh yeah it is kaba, kaba. It's, but it's long yeah. off. Oh. It's kaba, kaba. Oh, kaba. kaba. Yeah, I always okay. get that part wrong. Kaba. And then the last one, I'm assuming that's a tiger because I don't know why, but the Japanese always draw them with like a cross for their stripes on their oh. top of their head, but it's tora. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like Dora Dora was a famous anime. Um because she was called like the palm tiger, so Tora Dora, but anyways. I never made that correlation um, that the Kora in there is uh is tiger. I never really thought about that, but that makes mm, complete sense. Yeah, it's just because they called her like she was a fierce small tiger, so they called her Tora. Yep. Interesting. Cool. Well, let us continue. Uh unless I think uh, that was the last yeah, one. Though. That's the last uh -huh. one there. Okay. Uh, I, I didn't have enough time to do more. <laughs> let's, let's think of other stuff uh, that we can keep going with. Uh, just a few, like a few words. Uh, so we have lots and lots of species. Let's do a few insects and maybe like a few foods or for um, or maybe, I don't know, uh, fruits or something. So we could ask the audience what, yeah. what they may want to know too. Yeah, I don't know how many people are here now. I can't see, but... Um... Three, yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, I mean... If there's something specific from Animal Crossing or otherwise you'd like to know, uh, please let us know. What's your favorite part about Animal Crossing? I like bug catching. 
Bug catching. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Bug catching is is uh. Mm -hmm. mm. So, let's go into bugs then a little bit. So, butterfly, one of the most important, is chol, right? Chol, or you can also say it twice. You can just say chol chol. I don't really understand the different implications of that. Saying it twice versus once. Uh, but that's a common common one. And then there's moths as well, uh, which is ga or under just the category of mushi, which just means uh, insects in general. Uh, something very, very common in Japan, especially in the summer, and if you play Animal Crossing, uh, you'll know that, uh, is cicadas, and they are loud sounds, semi. If you're a fan of Japanese poetry, uh, they will appear quite frequently in summer-themed poems because it's a very Japanese summery thing. It's, you know, I'm sure you've seen anime set and when they transition to summer break you, you hear the screaming cicadas japanese cicadas are terrifyingly loud uh and terrifyingly big it seems like it seems like animals and bugs in japan have sort of evolved down a, a course of becoming huge if you've ever seen a japanese crow it is like the size of a chicken it's pretty scary actually um what else we have a uh, cockroach you'll get these in your house what are the what are those things that have the the pointy boy at the end? Uh, the, the um the king beetles. The yeah 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 they're, they're pretty big in Japan too. After this one, oh uh, wait no we gotta do this one. Oh, so, so, oh I'll, I'll type it. I'll type it. Yeah, Goki Buddy is cockroach. Uh, I've told this story before about having my friend see one in Yokohama and scream at the top of her lungs at like ten o'clock at night. These 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 guys are uh, not well loved for sure. King King Beetle, uh, gosh, I don't wow. know. I don't even <laughs> rhinoceros beetle. Yeah, the rhinoceros beetle. Kabuto mushi. That's Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank Kabuto you. mushi. So here in America, kids somewhat like insects, but you know, you see more boys, especially grow up with like a dinosaur obsession, right? Um, but in Japan, there's kind of a tendency for boys to really love beetles growing up. So there's like uh, a game called Mushi Kingu which is like a gotcha trading card game that you find at Toys R Us in Japan that a lot of kids grew up collecting and stuff like that. Uh, and you know, I, I can't really explain why insects are so popular. When I went to Mino Park in Osaka, there's like a kid's insect discovery center. I don't know. It's just like a collective fascination. So kind of odd. Um, other bugs... Let me think. Uh, scorpions and tarantulas are. Why would I want to know that? They're oh, just spider mage in general. Oh, they are. Yeah, they're they're big in the game. So Sasso. I never had a single spider, scorpion, or anything on my island. They only show up at night, and it's it's like they're super high oh, value, no, no, no. so they're pretty rare. But at night, I've never found them either. They're they're supposed to be pretty rare. When the game first started, there was a ton, oh. of them, but they they sell for like ten thousand bells in the game, so they're supposed to be, <laughs> supposed to be rare. Yeah, so scorpion, sasori, I don't know, this will come up very often. Tarantula on its own, I guess they just use the English name there, tarantula. Or any... um, bee or hornets. Bee, yeah, and then bee, just, just spider bee. on its own, Seven, you mentioned wanting, uh, I guess that's kumul, which is also the kumul. word for cloud, uh, just different kanji, obviously. And then bees. Oh, come on. That's not it. Bleh. <laughs> or Bex, Switzerland. No, it's, uh, it's hachi. Uh, so the word mitsu means syrup, so hachimitsu is honey, bee syrup, bee juice. Um, you said something else after bee, what was it? Uh, Can't remember. Hornet, but it's under there, so. Uh, yeah, okay. I guess I guess they don't necessarily distinguish them. Um, can, you can you guys think of any more insects? I don't know. Any of our listeners want to weigh in? No, okay. Uh, I'm trying to think of oh. one without a really long name. Yeah, some of them, some of them have really super long names. I'm trying to think of some common ones. Uh, oh, that's not common houseflies. Uh, yeah, housefly is usually you just use. Um, well, yeah, by mm -hmm. I've I've always just said mushi. I don't really hear people particularly specify for that. Uh, but mosquito yeah, is um, mosquito is sooth, right? Uh, it's cop. Or ka. I knew it was a one syllable one. <laughs> ka is mosquito, yeah. Here's another one. Uh, this one is one of my favorite words. Hotaru is firefly. 
Firefly viewing is a pretty big tradition in Japan, just like it is uh, in the U.S. Um, nice kanji there. Uh, somebody mentioned another insect. I can't remember if you want to speak up. Uh, a moth. A what? A moth? Yeah. Yeah, moth is ga. So we, uh, we got ka and we got ga. So don't forget it. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I mentioned before, it's pretty common to write these just with uh, katakana. In fact, you know, I don't even know in the game if they would present the kanji for these species at all. Um, let's talk about fish a little bit, because this is pretty relevant, especially in Japan. They eat a lot of fish there. So a fish that we don't really hear much in America is called the sea bream. This is one of the most important fish in Japan. It's Thai. Have you guys ever had Thai-yaki before? The fish pancakes filled usually with red bean paste. Uh, Thai-yaki is really, really cute. And um, it's that Thai, right? Uh, outside of that, we got sharks. Same. Um, I don't know what sharks are native to Japan, but I'm sure a lot of them are. Mm, outside of that, we have jellyfish. These are pretty culturally important in Japan as well, which is kurage. Outside of that, I don't know. Stephanie, you want to talk maguro. about oh, maguro. Ma maguro? Maguro. Maguro, yeah. yeah. Maguro is tuna. Uh, so, m maguro is like the fish tuna, but if you are to eat it, if it's like Japanese style, you'll usually see it as just maguro. So like maguro, maguro don is like maguro on rice, like a bowl of rice. Uh, mm. But you might see uh, in like onigiri rice balls from convenience stores, you might see like tuna mayo, like tuna and mayo together. Um, so you, you might see tuna. And if you say tuna, you'll be understood. But to, to call like a living fish a tuna is, is pretty unusual, I suppose. Type in socket. There's like actually one that's like, it's kind of like... It's, it's, I don't know why salmon. it's spelled. So, salmon, there it is. Yeah, sake. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and then toro. Type in toro. Toro, toro. Toro. So toro is a specific <clears throat> cut of tuna. You'll see it's like the the most desirable cuts of uh, of the tuna, which you normally see on nigiri and wasushi and stuff like that. So the, mm. the, the maguro don I mentioned, usually the way I've enjoyed it is kind of chopped up like ground beef almost, and that's called maguro toro don, which is a tongue twister. Like, see if any of you, I want to, I want to hear you guys try to say maguro toro don. So, uh, let me, let me write it. Hold on. Ma Why are you so mean? Because it's a fun tongue twister and it's a delicious food. Anybody want to give it a shot? I'll <laughs> try it. Um, maguro toro don. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Um, it's kind of, uh, an unusual food to eat something that texture. Um, like, uh, I don't know. It's kind of weird. But yeah, that's usually used total for that. Uh, Kani. Okay. Kani. Kani, yeah. Kani is... I don't even like seafood. Why do I know all these? Because <laughs> Japan's so obsessed with seafood. It's uh... Thing, you know? uh, Kani is crab. Uh, if any of you are familiar with the Japanese language learning program Wani Kani, that's actually Wani, which is crocodile or alligator, plus crab uh outside of that let me say yeah ika is squid squid is quite popular to consume in japan as well as that you might have had takoyaki before taco is octopus uh then there's also let's see what is clam i think that's uh it's kaki you could say kuramu i thought it was kaki yeah i thought kaki was it Kaki is oyster, apparently. Oh, oyster. Well, okay. whatever. Same difference, Or right? Japanese persimmon. I wonder if you, like, order, like, if you want to order, like, an oyster and a persimmon, do you say, Kaki to kaki onegaishimasu? Such a nerd. Unagi. Yeah, yeah unagi. Uh, unagi is eel. Very popular. They seafood. eat that. Yeah, it's actually really good, and I don't even mm. like seafood, and it's, like, really good. I do like it as well. I've, I've not had it in Japan, I don't think, but I've had it in America. Oh, it's so good in Japan, but it's so expensive, because in Japan, they think if you eat unagi during the summer heat, it'll help oh. combat it. 
like、うなぎを食べると、あの、like、熱を防止、熱の防止だ。So, like, when you eat、um, eel, it's gonna prevent heat stroke. Like, they literally, when I was walking in Tokyo, they're like, come get your eel so you don't get heat stroke. And I'm like, that's not how this works. That's interesting. But some genius guide had the marketing plan to say,、Man. what if we tell people that this gets rid of heat stroke? He's like the Edward Bernays of Japan, you know? Bro, it's like 30, it was like $30 for like one small eel bite, like a few、That's、bites.、Weird. And I was like, listen, I'm just going to get heat stroke, I guess. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, no, I, I don't like eel enough to pay that much money for it. Have you ever seen how they、oh, serve、yeah. in England, like in London, the jellied eels?、Ooh. They like take eel. Well, it's eel. cheaper when it's not summer, but. Oh, okay. They just jack it up for the summer. Yeah, in, yeah. in London, they like, they take the eel and like basically make jello with it. Like eel jello served cold. It sounds、mm. awful.、Uh, another expensive treat is sea urchin called uni. It's My、good. dad had that. Did he like it? Yeah. Yeah. I've only had it once or twice. Like, it's so expensive usually. You can find it at places like Kuda Zushi, the conveyor belt sushi.、Uh, mm. And, you, you know, you can buy one for 100 yen or something. But to get the good stuff, like, the, the only people I know that regularly eat uni are like my hostess friends that are just like raking in the cash, you know? Uh, it's uma niku. Uma niku. <laughs> U- uma niku.、Uh, you mean、mm. horse meat? Ba niku? Yeah. Oh, is it ma niku? Ba niku?、Mm-hmm. I didn't know it had its own unique word. Yeah, it has a compound word. I, I, I mean, if you said like uma no niku, it's probably somewhat、oh. uncommon. They eat horses in Japan like most of Europe.、Uh, I don't think it's you know, not nearly as common as, as beef or pork or fish or anything, but、uh, I've had it quite a few times. I took Stephanie to a. Nice American steak restaurant. We had a lot of horse there. It was quite good. What is the.、Um, do you remember the word for the, the cod row that's so popular? It's.、Uh, I always forget、uh, this word. I don't like fish, so I can't quite remember.、Uh, tarako. Tarako. Or,、uh, or, sorry. I guess it's probably tarako or min taiko.、Um, so these are just like different fish eggs, usually served still in the little pouch thing. Spread on bread or put it on sushi、Oof. or all kinds of things. I, that, this kind of freaks me out. I mean, I've eaten balut, I've eaten all kinds of things that are considered unappetizing by most. This one just makes me uncomfortable somehow. I don't know. Gyokai just... rui, by the way, is seafood.、Yeah. Gyokai rui. Let's look at the kanji of it. Seafood. <laughs> There it is. Yes,、yeah. third one. Yeah, so it's fish、rui. and then, like, kind of like type and then, or, yeah. Yeah. So, to take a look, let's look at the kanji details here.、Um, you can see, so yeah, you got the fish here, and then jammed in or shellfish. I, I guess that's kind of funny that sh- shellfish. Concern oneself with my food. <laughs>、um, and then down here, yeah, so this is rui. So, like, you have like words like,、um, I think, is it shoru? Shoru. Shoru. Yeah, is a, is a common word containing this.、Uh, oh, it's. It's shoudui. Sho, shoudui. What? Sho, shoudui is paper. Yeah, I always get these confused in my mind if I'm trying to remember which, fair, one's, me too. which one's document and which one's variety. I need to, I need to drill that in my brain. Doku、um, shou is reading if that helps you. Oh, okay. That, that will help. I guess I should, yeah, I should remember that shou. That shouldn't, that shouldn't be that hard for me, but I, for some reason, this one is just always freaks me out.、Uh, okay, okay. Let's、uh, talk about fruit a little bit. Because, kudamono. Yeah, the word fruit itself is kudamono, as Stephanie says.、Uh, so if you look at that, you guys learned nomimono and tabemono and all kinds of mono, kaimono from Genki. This kuda on its own can be used to reference like juice or like fruit content. You'll see that on cans and it does have the meaning of fruit.、Uh, has lots Or of success.、Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so you got, a, you got a lot of compound words here, like to accomplish or. Uh, things like that. Next is let's go through the fruits that are in Animal Crossing. So we have apples, which are a dingo.、Mm-hmm. Stephanie, what's your favorite fruit in Animal Crossing? What does your island have? It only had ringo. A ringo dake. You had ringo? I had <laughs> nashi. I had nashi, which is、uh, pear, specifically Asian pears, but all pears are nashi. Uh, then there's oranges, which you could call orenji if you wanted to, but they also have the Japanese traditional word, which is specifically the satsuma orange,、uh, which is mikan. This is the word you'll learn in Genki, so this is the word you'll probably mostly use for homework and exams and stuff like that if you're 
studying through Genki. Uh, let's see. Outside of that, there's cherries. So you guys all know Sakura, sakura is the tree, the cherry blossom trees. But the fruit itself is called Sakuran Bo. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that comes from. I, I, it has the kanji down there. Right? It looks like it's like uh, the the N bowl is the same as the kanji for peach, which is Momo. So Momo are one of my favorites. Uh, then you also have, let's see, what else? There's durian and the new leaf version. These are one of the worst smelling fruits, objectively. What's a durian? I've never seen one before. They're huge, spiky, like, have you seen a jackfruit before? Oh, are they the ones that are white on the inside? They're kind of yellowy white, like the color of, like, spoiled vanilla pudding or something, and that's what they smell and taste like, too. Uh... They're like they're about the size of jackfruit. They're big enough that people have died by getting hit by them when they fall off of trees. So, oh. uh, they're somewhat Fun popular fact. in Japan. They're very popular in China, and they come from, I believe, like Indonesia, Singapore region, where they're super popular. They smell so bad that most public transportation has banned people from eating durian on board because it just disturbs people. Um, let's see. In the tropical versions, there's bananas. Banana is literally just the same exact word. It's banana. Uh, then... It's coconut. I actually don't know coconut. It's coconut. Isn't there... Are there coconuts in the game? Yeah, yeah, there's coconuts. There? Yeah, there are. Uh, coconut. Pretty nice. straightforward. And I think in the tropical version, there's also lychees, which are my favorite fruit. Daichi. I love lychee, yeah. I love lychee. Lychee's so good. Yeah, it's, it's, they're so it's, good. And they taste, for anybody that's not had them, they're like a combination of, like, cherries and pear with like a rose taste they're very floral if you've never had lychee you should get some lychee candies or like a lychee ramen or something it's such a good flavor and it's so popular in japan oh, too mm, very popular uh stephanie mentioned pumpkin i did kabocha, oh. <laughs> kabocha and we mentioned that in the halloween one as well so i hope you guys remember that one uh and if you don't you'll get a you'll get a letter soon yeah, we, you know, those things that look like birds, they're actually our robots. I'm sorry, birds aren't real. Um, the Great Pumpkin is, I guess, are they referring to the Charlie Brown film? I don't know. Kabucha? No, that must be a different Great Pumpkin. I don't think, I don't think Charlie, well, who knows? I, th I mean, Charlie Brown is popular in Japan. Hold on, I want to see if, the, if they're referring to Charlie Brown. Are you sure you want to be doing that? It says uh, Italian. Oh, okay. Not Great Pumpkin. Well, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> so, what else is there? We've talked about fish. We've talked about fruit. We've talked about... I don't know. What else is there to talk about? I mean, it's been an hour if we want to just... Yeah? Uh, okay. <laughs> well, are there any Animal Crossing related questions uh, before we conclude? We'll stick around after to okay, answer... Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll answer some ginky questions, but uh, if there's no more Animal Crossing questions, I'll go ahead and wrap up the recording here. Um, so, anybody got anything to say? Do do do. No. Okay. Well, um, thanks for joining for the Animal Crossing part of this nice evening, and uh, I will go ahead and stop the recording. <laughs>